Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who are chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I've handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for ter terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the one who came among us and is risen. Alleluia. Please be seated. I was reading a, a news piece the other day on the demise of the church, that more and more people are losing interest in religion in Christianity in particular, that the mainline Protestant churches and the Catholic Church and Orthodox churches are, are all losing membership. And part of the article I was reading asked the question, has the church lost its voice? Has this church ceased to be relevant in a society that is so complex and so diverse? Has the church lost its purpose? So this morning, I want to first of all thank you, those of you who are here, proclaiming by your words and your actions that the church has not lost relevance to you in your life, in your living, in your place in society, and in your place in your sense of how you fit into God's creation. Thank you for your presence here this morning, or at least for your curiosity, if you're still wondering Maybe that question rolls around in your mind. Is there anything worth attending to at church these days? Well, that's the question I'm going to try to lay out for us this morning, an answer to that. And I want to focus this morning on fear. We heard in the, the gospel story this morning that the women, Mary Magdalene and, and Mary and Salome, went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body on the first day of the week, Sunday, for them. And when they got there, the stone was rolled away. The tomb was not as they expected it to be. Sitting there was a, a young man dressed in white. And he knew who they were and what they were looking for. He's not here. He is raised, as he said he would be. But go and tell the others what you have seen, what you have witnessed, and he is going ahead of you where he will meet you in Galilee. Go. The Gospel of Mark tells us they were seized with terror and amazement, and they left and said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. 
At that point in their journey, in their experience of the risen Lord, they could not comprehend what their eyes beheld, couldn't process it, couldn't understand what was going on. It immobilized them, didn't it? They had clear instructions, go and tell his disciples and Peter and the others what you have seen, what you now know. Jesus is raised from the dead. But their fear constricted their vocal cords. They couldn't put into words what they couldn't understand. Fear has that effect on us, doesn't it? When we don't understand something, we're, we're afraid of it. And that fear can often morph into hate. We see that across the world, don't we? We're not understanding something or someone leads to horrible interactions. You know, most of the wars that are fought down through human history to present day times are rooted in fear, in misunderstanding. How do we respond to fear other than going to war? One of my favorite poets, Wendell Berry, has a response. This is called The Peace of Wild Things. When despair grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting for their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Beautiful poem, isn't it? And it is an answer to how we respond to fear. We can withdraw. We can hide ourselves away. We can find a place of peace and comfort and rest there for a while. But it's temporary, isn't it? At some point, Barry has to get up from his resting place and go back to his life, go back to all those things that wake him up in the middle of the night that he worries about for himself and for his kids and his grandkids. When I was a child, my younger sister and I would occasionally be left alone in our house seven, eight years old. My sister's a year younger than I am. And oftentimes, we would hear something in the house, right, the way kids do, and panic, right? And yet, because we had each other, because I was looking out for my little sister, I somehow was able to muster the courage to go towards that noise and try to figure out what was going on. Having each other somehow gave us the courage to face what we were afraid of. We were still trembling, but we faced it. It's another one of the ways that we respond as human beings, isn't it? If we're afraid of something, we, we gather together with others who hear the same things or see the same things, afraid of the same things, and we find courage in each other's company. But of course, the next step of that bonding together with others who are afraid of a particular thing that we don't understand, don't know where it's coming from, don't know where it's going, is that we begin to hate that thing. We see this played out over and over again, don't we? Like-minded people coming together to point fingers at what is causing them to be afraid pointing fingers at what they don't understand and want to go away. It plays out over and over again. We're always looking for the causes in our society of what we're afraid of, the 
demise of democracy or the demise of the economy or who knows what. So we come up with all these isms that we point a finger at and say, that's the problem. It's socialism, communism, fascism, sexism, racism. All of the isms that we can point fingers at and say, there's the problem. That's what we need to be afraid of. That's what we need to hate and eliminate, destroy. The reality is that railing against these isms, whatever they might be, and whatever bad things they may actually contain or difficulties, challenges that they do possess, we kill one, another pops up. All we're really doing is, is rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, right? The iceberg, the iceberg that threatens to sink us is our heart turned to stone through fear that has morphed into hate. FDR, some of you may have been alive when he said this, 1933, his inaugural address, the country in the throes of a depression, people very afraid, uncertain, Remember the words he spoke? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. It will destroy us, he said. It will freeze us. It will immobilize us. When our times call for action, when our times call for us coming together, words worked. We moved ahead as a nation. We overcame our fear. We came together. This fear that possesses us, that morphs into hate, it is what we need to stand against. Wendell Berry has another poem, another solution it has a tone of withdrawing, but there's something deeper going on as well. Barry writes, I go among trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings, and I hear its song. Then what I am afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight. What I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings, and I hear its song. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. As we sing, the day turns, the trees move. When we don't understand something, we have two choices. We can fear it and begin to hate it, or we can move toward it and try to understand what we don't understand. One response leads to the disasters that we have always experienced as human beings all of the terror, all of the war, all of the fighting. The other leads to peace, to compromise, to coming together, to working together, to living together, 
to thriving together, to living together as God created us to live, as his children. We need to embrace this idea of coming together, of exploring those things that we don't understand. One of my bishops many, many years ago, Gene Robinson, who himself, through his ordination as an openly gay man, caused a lot of people to question and wonder, to fear and to hate. One of Gene's hallmarks of his ministry was what he called radical hospitality. That we need to radically welcome and care for and work to understand those in the world around us. Part of what Jean was talking about was an openness to the needs and the hurts of the world, that the church needs to be actively engaged and, and caring for the marginalized, as Jesus did and showed us over and over again. And the church pays attention to that part of radical hospitality. We do it fairly well sometimes. But there's another side to what Gene was talking about, what he continues to talk about. And that radical hospitality is to sit with what we don't understand, what gives us fear, to welcome it in, as the poet Wendell Berry suggests, to learn instead of hating it, to love it. We have just walked through our Lord's passion. When Jesus faced with people who didn't understand him, who feared him and hated him, nailed him to a cross, he willingly allowed them to do that, to show us to reveal to us the redeeming power of God's love. That even the thing we fear the very most in this world, death, is not the final word. There is life on the other side of it. Full life, resurrected life. Dr. King understood that, didn't he? He knew that if his answer to the hate that was spewed at him and so many others working and struggling to bring about some equity in this country, racial healing, that if he met the hate that was spewed at them by returning hate we would all be destroyed. Instead, he said, there is another way. Let us build a beloved community that does not respond in kind, but responds in love. Is it a costly response? Yes, it is. But is it a response that offers hope and reconciliation and possibility and new life? Yes, it is. Dr. King was not a perfect man. He was not Jesus. But he loved Jesus. And he followed Jesus. And he changed the world. None of us are perfect. We all give in to fear. We all point fingers. We all know the results of such actions in our world, in our lives. But we have an invitation before us today to do as Dr. King did. <coughs> to love this man 
this Lord, this Savior, who came among us to show us a better way, to show us a path to peace, to show us the way to allow love to flourish in this world, so that when hate raises its ugly head, we have an answer. And if not with military might, it's not with our rage and our anger, it is with love. Our invitation this morning is to love Jesus and to follow Jesus into the way that leads to peace and life. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith, the faith that banished the fear of those women at the tomb. We believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, Father God, God from God. God Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, suffered death, death and, and was buried. buried. On, the On the third day, day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With, With the, the Father, Father and the Son, Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has, he has spoken, spoken through, through the prophets. prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic, Catholic and apostolic Church. We, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. We come with anticipation on this first day of the week to become witnesses, sharing in the resurrection life of Jesus as we pray, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty One, you have filled your church with new life and empowered us through the conquering love of Jesus. Raise us with your spirit that we may live in the power of Christ's resurrection to bring life and light to all the world. 
We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Linda, the primate of Canada, Douglas, our bishop, Peter, Agostino, Bill, Dale, Doris, and Larry, our priests. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The right hand of the Most High has triumphed over evil and death, bringing new hope to all the world. Speak your living truth to everyone who leads and holds authority among the nations, that they may be agents of life and justice. We pray for Joseph, our president, and Ronald, our governor. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. The apostle Peter taught us, O God, that you show no partiality, but you accept all who live reverently and do right. Let your peace extend to every person that the power of evil and injustice may be banished and all people may live as beloved children of the divine. Be with us in this community that we may be glad witnesses of your goodness, O Holy One. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, Haiti, and all places torn by war and unrest. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. We give thanks to God who is good, whose mercy endures forever, and for the blessings in our lives. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ, the wounded healer, has overcome all that can threaten us. Let his resurrection power bring healing and hope to those for whom we pray, especially Adeline Collins, Roger and Evelyn Kronsis, Joanne Hood, Jennifer, Jim and Susan, Wally and Joan, Linda Grossclose, David, Alex and Diane, David and Lynn, Michael Boner, and all those we now name. Carol and Dale, from Maddie, from Megan. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ has died and is risen, bringing life and immortality to light. We remember those who have died, especially those we now name. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. We offer these prayers to our risen Lord as we pray to be witnesses to his work and share in his message of reconciliation and peace. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by, by what, what we have done and by what, what we have left undone. We have, we have not, not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have we not have loved, loved our neighbors, our neighbors as, as ourselves. We are, we are truly, truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the, For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy, mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now rise as you're able, <clears throat> keeping in mind that every little bit, even if you just raise your eyes, is a sign of the risen Lord in his name. Offer to one another the peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. That's peace, Cindy. That's peace. Amanda, God's peace. Happy Easter. God's peace, peace Michael. With God's peace. Peace be with you. You were great reading. Thank you. Peace, Mackenzie. God's peace, Agostino. Mary, peace. God's peace. peace be with Randy, God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Alec, God, peace. Diane, God's peace. Peace be with you. Thank you, Pam. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Edie, God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Peace. God's peace. Peace, Hal. God's peace, Nancy. God's for peace making be with you. So good folks. to see you. God's Thanks peace. for making room for all those peace. Mike, God's oh, peace. God's peace be with thee. Thank you. God's peace be with you. God's peace, peace. Mary. <laughs> God's peace, peace. Happy God's peace. God's peace, Kim. God's peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Nice to see you. God's peace. God's peace. Diane, God's peace. Marcus, peace. Nola, God's peace. God's peace, Margaret. God's peace be with you. Peace. 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 Share it with you. God's peace be with you. Welcome. God's peace. Welcome. Is it? Well, good morning. I understand that my mic was on during a lot of the sharing of that piece, which is, you know, not a bad thing, right? It's just been broadcast to the whole world that we are at peace here at St. Alfred's. It's a joy to be with you this morning um, as we do gather together as people um, hungry for peace, hungry for love, hungry, hungry for belonging, um, and you have come um, to a good place for all of that. And so I'm glad you're here this morning as we celebrate um, the hope um, of the resurrection, uh, not as an historic event, but as a reality in our daily living, um, our daily interactions with one another. Um, so good to be with you this morning. Um, a particular welcome to those of you who are uh, new to St. Alfred's or occasional visitors. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. And I hope something in our worship and our welcome this morning has been a blessing to you, um, that you'll carry that blessing with you go as you go, and, um, and it may draw you back um, at some point uh, in the future. Um, we leave those doors open um, for all, and good to be with you. Uh, we do have a guest book uh, in the entryway there. If you haven't had a chance to sign the guest book and uh, give me a way to be in touch, I would appreciate that. I'd love to reach out and, and see if there are questions I could answer or ways to welcome you more fully. I would be happy to set aside time to do that with you if that's something you're interested in doing. So again, thank you for being here. And a welcome to our folks watching from afar. Um, peace be with you uh, on this beautiful Easter morning. Uh, you may have noticed the, the high top tables out in the courtyard right after the service this morning. We're gonna gather out there, uh, pop a few corks um, and celebrate uh, Easter um, in fine fashion. Would love to have you stay and enjoy some conversation, a sharing of God's peace, um, and some good refreshment. So uh, there are non-alcoholic uh, options as well, plenty of those. Um, so invite you all to come and join us. 
I do want to take a moment this morning to thank um, folks here at St. Alfred's, all the many, many people who make a service like this possible, uh, work behind the scenes, our Flower Guild, who's been at work for a week now, uh, putting all these things together, uh, planning, um, thank you to them, to our altar guild, to our altar servers, our clergy, um, our ushers, um, our office staff who produced hundreds of bulletins this past week. Um, so many people are involved in, in making this all happen, um, and I'm grateful to each and every one of them, uh, and particular thanks to Kevin, who is still upright, and, and his beautiful choirs, the Bell Choir, the Cambridge Ringers, and our adult choir. Um, thank you for just amazing music this whole week. It's been and finally, again, thanks to all of you. Um, for without you, none of this means anything. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of God's presence, God's uh, love, God's peace, God's shalom uh, in this world. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race, and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, you reconcile us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> on the night he was handed over to bread, handed over, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. <clears throat> Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, 
through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from age to from generation to generation. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.